Yo, yo, yo. Kiko Suarez here. Welcome to another Kiko's Corner. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching, listening, subscribing, liking, whatever you want to do in this situation. If you're listening to this, you're one of the OGs. You're one of the few people that actually still are getting into this new community, this new um, opportunity that I'm doing. And overall, you guys know, you're probably thinking like, bro, you haven't posted a podcast in about a week. Nothing really crazy happened in the last week. If I'm honest, like the the friendlies were going on. Messi scored his 800 goal in his career uh, with Argentina against Panama. Uh, I think it was uh, the U- the European qualifiers for the Euros are going on. Uh, Ronaldo's playing well with Portugal. Uh, Spain lost twice, I think. Let me fact check myself before I start just saying things that didn't happen. But I'm pretty sure, like Portugal won six zero against Lux- uh, Luxembourg. Uh, If I remember, Argentina was on the pace to beat, uh, I think it was Curaçao 10-0, but then they stopped in the first half. But I remember, if I remember properly, Spain, Spain did lose. Yeah, they lost. Okay, I was not wrong. They won 3-0 against Norway, which was pretty good. Jose Lu scored in two goals in, in two minutes, which is crazy. Then they lost against Scotland with a double, with a brace by Tom, by freaking McTominay, by freaking Scott McTominay. That is crazy. Um, but overall, that, that that's mainly the reason why I haven't, I didn't do a podcast because there wasn't much to talk about. Friends was, the friendlies were going on, but now we're back into club football. But of course, the day that I decide to record, everything just goes crazy. Before I start addressing the whole new Barca situation with Tebas and everything, um, let me address the Manchester City 4, Liverpool 1. I personally saw that coming by a long mile. I really, like, I knew Manchester City was going to win. I didn't think it was going to be a 4-1. But then again, uh, Manchester City plays a style of football that is catered to just scoring a lot of goals. And if Madrid, who most of the time plays the counter, most of the time plays to like just win the game, not just really put on a show, but like just to win. If we were able to beat Liverpool 5-2, Manchester City ha- wasn't going to have a field, a field day. And they did. They did fantastic. Then Arsenal still top of the league. Uh, they're doing really good. I don't see a sign. Like I still... Think that uh, that like people that still think that Manchester City might win the league are correct because I'm still in that boat. I I'm not gonna give Arsenal the title until the Manchester City Arsenal game happens. If it's a tie or Arsenal wins, that's it. There's no way they can mess up. There's really no a legitimate way that they can mess up. Meanwhile, if Manchester City wins, then watch out because I did that. That's the one game I'm like I've been saying Manchester City is still my favorite to do it. Uh, and right now it's a play, it's a game, it's a race of a marathon of the both teams. But whoever wins that game pretty much guarantees the league at that point. Uh, but overall, looking at everything here, am I missing any other game? Uh, Bayern Munich. Oh yeah, no, we, we did talk about it. But Bayern Munich, uh, they get their first game under Thomas Tuchel. Did overwhelming if I'm honest. I watched the game just because I wanted to see okay, how good are they gonna be? Are they gonna be flashy? Because when the um, when Oliver Kahn or whoever did the statement from the board said that the team is not playing flashy enough and we don't see the team performing the way that we want, and by that is basically just like hey, we were winning, but we weren't winning the way that we want to win. Tusha won 4 2, but if you watch the game. Two goals came from mistakes, and one goal was a legit open play. And then uh, the last goal was when it was back and forth, and it didn't really matter. It was in the second half. They were already up 3-0. But then uh, Dortmund did get a chance at the 72nd minute with a pen, and Malin at the 90th. But overall, I was talking to uh, Guaje. If you don't know him, go watch the last podcast. I was talking to him, and we both said the same thing, just like, you will have still won Maybe even in a better way with Nagel's men. So this game didn't really prove anything. But at the same time, it's his first game under uh, Tuchel. So I'm not. I wasn't gonna be over criticize. Uh, I wasn't over gonna criticize over it. It's just I'm saying, pointing out the obvious. Then Chelsea lost two two zero against Aston Villa. Uh, Graham, <laughs> Graham Potter 
uh, already got the sack. He's no longer the Chelsea manager. And they, they are putting an interim coach. I think his name is Pedro. Uh, I'm going to have to check that uh, just to confirm his name. But overall, we all saw that coming. I'm going to have a Chelsea fan on one of the future episodes of the podcast just to ask her her opinion about this and everything. And dude, overall, it was a long time coming. But they decided to sack Potter a week, a week and a half before Real Madrid, which is crazy because it's on April, we're on April 3rd at the moment that I'm recording this. Their next game is against Liverpool tomorrow. In, in on the 8th is against Wolves and then on the 12th is against Madrid. So this new interim coach is basically being thrown to the Wolves with Liverpool, then has Wolves a week after, and then has Real Madrid. That bro, that's just Bro, I like if you were gonna sack Porter, you you should have never, because you the the whole project, the whole idea was to give him the support and give him time. You gave him what six months? I knew like they weren't playing well, but like still, like it, it's it, you cannot justify doing it and then sacking him at the first time of like like I, I, at this point you you already you already ate your words, you already gave him enough time to do all these things. You couldn't like let him the end of the season. You're already tenth. You're probably gonna get eliminated in the Champions League. I, I mean, I'm a Madridista, so I hope I hope I'm right, and I don't like feeling confident. But everything it's aiming at that they should lose, but then they, it would be the most Chelsea thing to actually beat us and eliminate us. But what what difference did it make? You if you don't win the Champions League, you're not gonna qualify to to the Champions League. You're in tenth, and for what I know, that they, they might still be in the FA Cup. I don't think they are. But if they were to win the FA Cup, they could qualify for the Conference League. Um, let me see. Yeah, no, they're no longer in the FA Cup or the EFL. So they, 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 they Europe for Chelsea doesn't look that bright for next season, which is it's kind of insane when you really when you really think about it. Um, what else? What other game? Important game happened. Barcelona beat Elche 4-0. They're still top of the table. Real Madrid beat Real Valladolid 6-0 in one of the most attractive style of plays that, that I have seen Ancelotti perform. Uh, he did the 4-2-3-1, which I haven't seen in a long time ever since the Mourinho era and um, sometimes sprinkled through Zidane. Of course, when I say I haven't seen it, it's because we didn't see it like Mourinho would do it week in, week out. Meanwhile, Zidane and Ancelotti will sprinkle it every now and then. But seeing Rodrigo and Asensio plus Vinicius and Benzema playing up front while having Cross and Schwamini in the midfield, well, bro, it was it was just delightful to see. Even Hazard got 20 minutes to play and he gave an assist. So overall, it was just good vibes during the weekend. I don't think we're going to win La Liga. I don't think it's possible. If we do, it's more on uh, Barcelona side, just crumbling. But I don't think they will. But I, that was a good style of play. That was a, a good uh, showcase. Um, Newcastle beat Manchester United. 2-0 in their first game back in the, the Prem since the, the break. And now Newcastle is third. Uh, Spurs tied today with two games in hand, but that actually moved United outside of the top four for the third time this season. And that, that's actually crazy with the way that uh, the form that Manchester United had. But and also another stat that I saw is that Manchester United are yet to let me see i think it's it's february yeah that manchester united in the in the premier league hasn't scored since february and ever since they they've been competing but they didn't score against liverpool they didn't score against southampton and they didn't score against newcastle which is crazy crazy when you really think about it um that uh, they had a scorching hot player in Marcus Rashford in form and they still weren't able to capitalize and they haven't scored in the Prem recently. Uh, PSG lost against Lyon. Um, slowly but surely, uh, PSG might need to wake up and might need to actually put a pep on their step in Ligue 1 because uh, they went from having a 12-point cushion in, in the league to now just 6 points and both Lens and Marseille are right on their neck with, with 60 points each. Uh, also, Messi is getting a, like booed and everything in 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 Ligue 1 by PSG fans. Honestly, bro, like freaking PSG and and Messi and the whole situation over there is a fiasco. I'm not gonna point fingers because I never think one player can ruin a team or one player can fix a team. 
Um, he's playing very well. It's just the numbers are not coming about. And yeah, I'm I'm not a Messi FC. I'm not see. I'm not Cristiano FC. I didn't think Ronaldo ruined the team. If anything, I thought he carried. And with this Messi situation, he's playing well. It's just the numbers or the results are not coming along. And of course. CRFC is just having a laugh about it, and Messi FC is coming at their neck, just saying like, "Well, the hell, he has a World Cup." It's something idiotic, in my opinion. Like, bro, like they're both like Messi's playing well. Like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go overboard to the fact that he's not affecting the scores to to the point that you would expect. But at the same time, they have Mbappe, they have Neymar, they have a, a super team in PSG. If if all of them are sucking. Dude, that the, the 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 whole club as a whole is a bigger problem than whatever is happening over there. Then Napoli versus Milan. Milan won 4-0. And this is in Napoli. This is Naples? Holy moly. I didn't know this was in Napoli. Wow. Okay, so last year when Barcelona beat Real Madrid 4-0, I didn't think too much about it because I was like, bro, we're not going to see you guys. Uh, until next season, this was more of a bragging rights, and the game didn't really matter. It didn't affect the, the season. If Napoli wasn't playing Milan in the Champions League, I would say the exact same thing. I'll be like, ah, it's a fluke. It, it happened. Like, no big deal. Napoli go win the uh, the Serie A. You don't have to worry about Milan. It was just a poor game. You had you didn't have Ossiman. It is what it is. You have to play them in two weeks or in... 20 days, 12 days, whatever it was for Chelsea with Madrid. You have to play them very, very soon. Actually, let me let me check just to be checked. Yeah, they're playing on 12. So that's in nine days. In nine days, you got to play this exact team. So mentally, those Napoli players are going to be like, was that a fluke or was that for real? Was that like, are, are, are we much better than anyone else in Serie A, but Milan has our number? It's the same situation that happens with Madrid and Barcelona. Is that Barcelona, for some reason, they always know how to beat Madrid. Like It's, it's like the, the only game that I know it's 50-50. It's, it's the only game out of the whole season that I'm, I look at the calendar, I'm like, okay, this is the one game I don't think we're going to win from the get-go. Just because Barcelona is that good. Barcelona, even in the last three years when Barcelona couldn't beat us, we would look at the calendar and be like, is this the, is this the day that we're going to lose? Is it going to happen? Are we going to tie? Are we going to win? Like, what is it? And we would just win. And this season, um, Barcelona has been doing really good and they have a number. Um, who knows what the next game is going to look like, though? I know that's going to be an interesting because with this new formation and everything, if, if Ancelotti takes it serious, we could be bound for a win. At this point, we're due a win just because three in a row, four in a row will be crazy. Even even a tie, like like four in a row defeats will be crazy. Um, but who knows? I don't want to predict the future. I don't know about it yet, and I, I haven't thought about it too much. But ideology or psychologically, Napoli being defeated by Milan 4-0, they're going to look at that game. They're either going to bounce back they're going to take it seriously and they're going to realize, that, okay, that 4 year we messed up. We let, let you guys beat us like that. It's not going to happen again. Or they're going to go with that self-doubt of, oh, my God, like, what's going on? Like, did we really get defeated by that because we let them or were they just that good that we couldn't do anything? Um, besides that, Spurs ties today against Everton, like I said. And overall, there's not much. Then... Before I touch on the on the whole Barcelona and, and Teva situation that happened today, uh, I do want to talk and give a shout out to the NCAA basketball. Tonight is the the final between San Diego uh, State Aztecs and the and Yukon, the the Huskies. But yesterday it was the final between Iowa and LSU. I think those are those were the two schools. It was really good. I enjoyed it. It was a very, very entertaining game. Um, Caitlin Clark, or whatever his name is, her name is Caitlin Clark, the guard, she was shooting from everywhere. She shot like 50% on the threes. And then this one girl, um, it wasn't uh, Jasmine Carson, I think it was. Uh, they, were saying, they were calling her the, the I Spice of uh, LSU. She went five five out of out of three points. If you if you don't watch basketball, you, you should. Like I love all sports. I'm not. If you you should give it a try. It's pretty entertaining. But the fact that she went off that way, it's insane. It's really 
Why my boyfriend? Hello? Hello, hello, hello. Okay, I think I think we should be good now. I don't I don't know what happened there. I hope the video that recording was fine. Um but I was going to say the the bi there's a big controversy in the whole situation because at the at the the buzzer when the game was over Andrew Reese, who's a very good player, don't get me wrong. She she was one of the most dominant players of the, of the season. I saw that she broke a record of uh, the most double doubles in a season. Like she finished with like 36, and she finished with 15 and 10 rebounds. So she added one more to the double double count. She started following uh, Miss Clark, Caitlin, whatever her name was again, and she got she was just like doing this thing and like waving off and everything. And for what it looks like. At first, I was like, oh, they were chivering. Like, they had to be talking shit the whole game, like, right? For what it looks like, they never talked once the whole game. I haven't seen any clips or releases or anything. And a lot of people, obviously, if you don't know, Clark is white and Reese is, is black. And a lot of people were starting putting the, the race car, which I don't agree with, dude. Like, freaking, it was supposed to be about sports. I don't know why this is taking so much over the game. Um, in my mind, I was talking to one of my, to one of my coworkers and I told him that, like, dude, I don't have an issue with shit talking. I don't have an issue with any of that as long as it's mutual. You see, like when the Memphis Grizzlies are talking shit to the Warriors, if the Warriors didn't respond, the Grizzlies would look like a Chihuahua and I'll be like, you bunch of losers. They're not even paying attention to you, but the Warriors they were chirping back and they go back and forth every time they see each other. So I'm like, okay, makes sense. All like gloves off makes complete sense. But then I was like, the the Clark at one point insult Reese. Did Reese have bad blood with her? Like I was like making it think like, why is she? Because after I didn't specify this. After the the buzzer goes, this goes on for like a solid 15, 20 seconds. Like she goes around, maybe not, maybe seven, eight, ten seconds. Of just her going, following Clark and just like doing this and like to the ring and just like straight up looking at her and singling out. The buzzer's already gone. Her team is celebrating and she's focused on Clark, right? And later on, I was like, I was telling you, like, if, if there's a reason why, good. Like, if there's personal things that we don't know about, makes sense. But nothing has come out. So I was like, what is it? Like, why are you so, like, why were you so adamant? Uh, are going against her then a clip came out from uh miss reese uh live saying that you see this you see this like she's not doing this tonight right to her teammates this this was in reference of caitlin clark waving a player on an open three on the last game she just waved her off she said like go ahead shoot it I'm not going to defend you. I'm just going to wave you off. Go ahead and try to do it. She didn't shoot it. That player didn't shoot it from another school and everything. So I don't understand where this, oh, like we don't take disrespect thing when the disrespect didn't even happen to you. Draymond Green gets open all the time. Russell Westbrook gets open all the time. Why? Because those players cannot shoot the three or they're there. Like you take the risk of that player taking the three before you waste the time defending it. That's what fucking Clark did. And the fact that that was the, the, the thing that ignited it all, I'm like, that's that seems silly that you went out of bounds for something that wasn't even included to you. Again, if there's more information, if there's a clip of them talking shit to each other, God forbid I take every, everything back and gloves off. At that point, you go, sis. But if, if it was legitimate for something that happened to another player that had nothing to do with you, I, I I find it I find it weird. I find it not I don't f I don't see the logic behind it. I had to pick up a phone call in the middle of that, so I just paused the stream, but uh, while I was talking to my brother because I was talking to him, I looked at some other tweet that had to do with this whole situation with uh Miss Reese and Miss Clark. And <laughs> he basically said exactly what I just said. Um I missed it. Okay, and he goes just to clarify, this is the, the video. This is what I'm talking about. Like, there, there was a live after the fact, or like, while well, he's getting the championship, or she's getting the championship. And he goes, the, the tweet, I get trash talking during the game, but the narrative that Caitlin Clark disrespected LSU because she backed off 
of a 21% three-point shooter on South Carolina in a whole other game is hilarious. That's what really doesn't compute in my brain. That you're mad at what somebody did in a whole another different game that had nothing to you with your school or this game whatsoever. And you took it upon yourself to say like, oh, you disrespected me? No, motherfucker, it wasn't even your school. But... <laughs> Whatever, if that's what it takes to like get you on the edge mentally, so be it. That's what Michael Jordan used to do. And uh, Michael Jordan was a dickhead as well. So I'm going to call a spade a spade. She was a dickhead for doing it. But if that's what it took for her to win, she got the W. Her team got the W. So it is what it is. I just don't like the whole idea of um, acting tough when you're up. Because when Devin Booker was doing all that shit and Luca said it, Look at Dante said it. Everyone acting tough when you're up. He wasn't talking that much shit when they're starting losing, and the maths came back. So that's my idea. You don't punch down. You usually you gotta punch while like the tables are on the same level. Um, and then let's see something something else happened. Um, did anything else happen before I talk on the the Teba situation? Uh, I don't I don't think it did. If I missed anything, I mean the MLB is back. Um, baseball is back. Not not like it really matters. <laughs> I'm so I'm sorry, but like baseball in my eyes doesn't it doesn't entertain me. It's not that uh, prevalent. But they did include a um, a a a clock, a a pitch clock, which is fantastic because for the first time and I don't know how long I was actually paying attention to a baseball game. Uh, I forget what game it was already. Um, I, I really forget what game it was. That's crazy. But overall, the, the pitches, the innings were going so fast. I was like, oh, wow, I actually blink and I'm missing the game. Meanwhile, baseball, you could go get your drink, get your beer, do whatever. And the same pitch might be still being the one being played. So I'm very happy with it. I might start getting involved into baseball now uh, overall. But besides that, ever since last time, Again, the, the MLB just started. The NBA is only like five games left for each team. The Lakers, my Lakers, might make it to uh, the the fourth, the fifth seed. Sorry, after starting the season two and ten, after trading Russell Westbrook, <sighs> thank you, D'Lo, uh, Vanderbilt, and uh, who else did we get in that in that trade? We got somebody else. It was D'Lo, Vanderbilt, and uh, somebody else. But bro, overall, I'm just happy. I'm just happy that the Lakers are looking good. Uh, if they go into the playoff directly in a seven-game series, the Lakers will be a problem. Mark my words, in a seven-game series, it will be very hard for a team to beat the Lakers four out of seven times without going into game seven or without going into a fight. And I'm very excited for it. But besides, oh, sorry. besides that, yeah, I think, I think now we can talk about the Tebas... Situation. So today, La Vanguardia, a newspaper from Spain, I think it is. Uh, I'm not. I'm not sure where it's from. It's from Europe, for what I know. Uh, but La Vanguardia, and of course, it's protected all over a um, paywall, which I'm not gonna pay. I'm not gonna do it. I know I saw the article somewhere. Uh, oh Lord. I know, I know I was able to read it earlier today, but I want to make sure that I don't miss out on anything. Okay. Okay, so in this morning, La Vanguardia published information that assured that Javier Tebas, president of La Liga, had provided the prosecutor with false evidence against Barcelona in the investigation that is being carried out in the Negreta case. Barcelona saw those news, and the Catalan club, completely angry and outraged by the whole situation, posted a statement in its official site to ask the president of La Liga, I want to make sure that doesn't play, of La Liga explanation, and if his actions were proven, as the, new paper, the newspaper pro, uh, points out, to demand his immediate resignation. So Barcelona is so angry to the point that, hey, this statement that you're being accused for, you should resign if they come out true. Isn't that what Barcelona is asking for people not to do about their case? Saying that, like, hey, please do not say we're guilty until everything comes out because we're innocent. It, you, see, you see my issue immediately because I already read the whole thing. 
it's it's ridiculous that Barcelona came out of their way just to say like, hey, bro, if you're if you're guilty, you better resign, bro. So so innocent to proving guilty or guilty to proving innocent. Like what's going on? Faced with this situation, Tebas himself used Twitter account to deny the information published by La, Vanguardia, La Vanguardia and make it clear that he never presented full evidence to incriminate Barcelona in the investigation into the alleged payments to Enrique Negreira. The Vanguardia ad is a false and the proof is in the text. The document is false and we're not accusing anyone. Everything is wrong and it's self-victimizing, said the top manager of the group. In another message, he continued, the headline of Vanguardia is false. We're not accusing anyone. The news itself corroborates. Why did that? Is this getting translated by the... Oh, uh, that's why. Hmm. Okay. Uh... Okay, here, here. Now, now it makes more sense. I was like, why is it repeating itself? Uh, twice and it's because uh, one is the statement by Tebas and the other one is it he said like uh, the announcement by La Vanguardia is uh, false and the proof is in the text and then they missed out the quotation the document is false and we have not accusing anyone blah 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 and then later on we see finally Tebas also left a response to Barcelona before presenting the letter to prosecutor's office the La Liga legal advisor informed the delegate commission on February 21st so that's over two months ago of the content of the letter and the document right of rectification requested from La Guardia clarified and what about you so overall this whole situation is bro the whole situation this is why I don't give my opinion about Barcelona and what's going on over there because Javier Tebas as much as I've been Criticize of him. I'm always gonna say that like bro. I, I don't like him as a president. I don't care he's a Madridista because oh He only punishes Madrid or like Barcelona blah blah blah. He has a vendetta Against Barcelona and there's no way in that pr the proof is in the pudding and like uh, Tebas is just an awful awful president that, and he's always has been meanwhile if we go to The La Liga He has been the president since 2013. He has been the president of La Liga since 2013. La Liga winners. If we look that up. Since 2013. Since 2013. It has been Barcelona. Atletico Madrid. Barcelona, Barcelona, Real Madrid. Barcelona, Barcelona, Real Madrid. Atletico Madrid, Real Madrid. So out of 10 years of Javier Tebas... Alleged vendetta against Barcelona. Barcelona has won six La Ligas. Madrid has won three, and Atletico Madrid has won one. No, they have won two. So let me count again. So it's Barcelona one, two, three, four, five. Five times. Atletico Madrid twice, and Madrid three times. One, two, three. Yeah. So fifty percent of the leagues have been won by Barcelona. The vendetta is not there. It's just the rules in La Liga are set up. And most teams, they don't have that issue. It's only Barcelona. And I, again, I don't like defending Tebas because I don't like the guy. But when the rules are set up and you just keep putting against the rules and then you want to say, like, oh, it's only against us. No, it's because the rules are there and you keep breaking them. And overall, this whole situation... Just to expand a little bit more on the the text, the documents that are said to be false is because they included the names of a Rosel and Jose Maria, but not the correct people. He it was just a a people like two per people that happened to have the name uh, the same name as the 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 ex president and ex counselor of. Uh, Barcelona, Josep Maria, and then uh, Rosel, I forget his name, from Barcelona, and that's why those papers were submitted. But then, of course, La Vandaria said, like, oh, this, play this paper is false, when in, re in reality, it's not the case. It's just they were wrong paperwork. It's just if that's the case, but, dude, La Liga would collapse without Barcelona. So if, it, if, it, if, it's, if it's in anything, Tebas is an idiot. But I don't think he would want Barcelona to get relegated. It won't help. It won't help whatsoever. I'm, re I'm, I'm reading a little bit more. Um, 
I'm, I'm trying to get however what was in who was this oh my god this was Barcelona for this fact only that of attribute and functions that do not belong to him although also out of dignity and respect for the presidency of La Liga Mr. Celebas should resign from his role However, aware of his obsession to pursue FC Barcelona and constantly show his aversion and manifest antipathy <laughs> towards our club, we understand that the current president of La Liga will persist in his leadership of continuing to harm our club. Wow. The La Vanguardia report alleged that Tevez sent false evidence to prosecutor's office on February 22nd and attempted to directly imply former President Jose, President Josep Bartomeu and Sandro Rosell. That's the person I was forgetting their name. For alleged unfair administration and mis misappropriation. Tebas allegedly did this by submitting a handwriting document penned by deceased former Barca director Josep Contreras. Yet Contreras finally have said that it not, did not contain the names of the former Barca presidents. This will mean that the letter Tebas allegedly put forward to the prosecutor's office has nothing to do with Caso Negreira. Instead, according to Contreras' family, the document, which was written decades ago, only contains the names of Contreras' lawyer Emilio Roman, the accountant of the companies he ran, Roman Rosell, and bank, uh, Bar Banca Catalan employee Josep Maria. Barca's explosive statement and demand comes after Tebas suggested Laporta should resign if he cannot explain the payments made to Negreira. Well, El Mundo reported that Barca paid over seven and blah, 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 and we know the Negreira situation, right? That one we don't need too much about. So, this is the thing. The paperwork. Put, put, put everything in two cents for one second. La Liga provided all the documents that the case is being prosecuted for, right? Because it's not La Liga. Like, this whole thing started because Negreta didn't do his taxes properly. And that brought up the payments. And therefore, La Liga and the Real Asociación or whatever, the Real Federación de Fútbol Español... Um, the, the Federation of Spanish Football They all opened an investigation against Barcelona La Liga just provided the documents Would it be possible That not Tebas But La Liga provided that document Because it had the name Rosel and Josep Maria Between a bunch of papers And now it's getting proven They're just like Hey, this piece of evidence This piece of evidence Is not having anything to do with this case It actually has to do with another case That had to do with Barcelona But not with this one Okay you throw it away, right? You still have a, a whole in, as investigation happening. So you don't point out one thing out of the everything and say like, oh, since this one thing is not correct, everything else is unproven. No, this is why there's an investigation. Again, do I think Barcelona is innocent? More than likely they are. Or more than likely they're not, there's not going to be proof to be proven that they did anything wrong. Because why? How do you prove that the money when trickle down to the referees and the referees made decisions based on that money. Unless those referees come out and say like, yeah, that's what happened, which I'm pretty sure they don't want to because that's going to like bad, like backfire on their end. There's no way of proving it. So they're more than, gonna, more than likely going to be declared innocent. Doesn't mean that you can use this little situation, right? And just be like, hey, this doesn't count. No, 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 no. Like let the whole thing happen and the statements already came out. And Tebas already did a whole ass like legal document saying in regards to um, the whole paperwork situation that, hey, La Vanguardia, you have about three days to fix this. If not, we go to court. And that is, ladies and gentlemen, a defamation case. Because if you're spreading lies, not a case, because this was just a straight up La Vanguardia saying something, saying that Tebas was lying, that is defamation. Talking about a case that is going on from La Liga and Barcelona and everything is not defamation. Barcelona fans that didn't know that. That's something very, very important to know. But on that note, uh, I, I'm actually surprised I was able to talk for 34 minutes on this uh, podcast. But I appreciate anyone that listened. Of course, I, I this was a very impromptu uh, podcast just because I haven't... Uh, posted anything in a while and I wanted to um, give you guys some content some just my opinions I, I don't claim to be an expert I I just quickly search everything and I uh, started talking about it while we were talking and while I was recording this and if there is more information that comes out and Tebas resigns whoop de doo because that's a win for me but again if there's more information it turns out that like Tebas did nothing wrong whoop de doo I don't care because, again, it, th this whole situation ju is just silly to me. 
but overall i really hope you guys enjoy it let me know in the comments if you're on youtube let me know if you're on spotify i think you can comment let me know what you guys think about the whole situation about the double the ncaa uh women's uh tournament are you with angel are you with caitlin do you understand what happened there do you understand the whole football situation do you care about what's happening at psg do you care what's happening in the premier league in la league and the champions league in the in the Serie A? let me know in the comments but as always i appreciate you all for the support and i'll see you next time Peace.